proper ungodly person. There's a price for that. Yes, doctor. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, you're yeah. correct. You know, um, I, you know, I believe that when your spouse is your friend, mm -hmm. when you spend a lot of time communicating with your spouse, I remember my deceased husband, we spent a lot of time talking and we did a lot of things together. Yes. And I want to recommend that you, 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 you communicate a lot. Put aside time to have conversations with your spouse. Um, enjoy the company of your spouse when you get married. Yep. I mean, even before you get married, begin to enjoy the company of the person that you're going to get married to. You know, and I'm not talking about every time you meet, you're praying, every time you're in the wood, every time. That's important. But I'm talking about just going out and having fun, just yeah. sharing things, just laughing together, just going out in the park, I don't know, going on the beach and enjoy each other's company. Because to me, when you enjoy each other's company, it's easier for you to cling together when you enjoy yes. each other's company. All right? It's easier to cling and to cleave. All right? Because the more you communicate, is the closer you get. And what we find happening is that husbands and wives spend time communicating with other people outside of the marriage. And when you communicate with people outside of the marriage, you get closer to them and emotional bond is formed. All right? So it's important mm -hmm. to communicate with your spouse. Now, I know that there are persons who will be listening to this video and uh, you are already married, all right? And you do not have a good relationship with your spouse. We know that counseling is required there, right? And you may say, but you know, you all are talking about all these things in terms of cleaving and cleaving and this is not happening in my marriage. Um, right now, we don't have a good relationship. And um, can you mute your mic, Mrs. Kendra? <laughs> yeah, we don't have a good relationship. I see the beautiful face. We don't have a good relationship. And um, he's go by his mother. And, and the and then he just, he just put his belly by his mother. And then when he come home, he doesn't want no food. And, he, he, and, and all of that. If that is the situation, then it means that you need counseling. There's nothing that, I mean, what can I say to you? This is, the, this is how your marriage is going. It's only counsel can really assist in terms of helping you and your husband or um, or your husband or it could be the wife sometimes, all right? Or um, having a talk and establishing proper boundaries in your relationship. I want to encourage persons who are getting married to ensure that there are boundaries in your marriage when you get married because sometimes you have a situation where mommy or daddy, you may say, I'm in the area or sister or brother or aunt. Hey, um, Sister London, um, or, or son or daughter or whatever the case may be. I'm in the area. Can I? Can I? Can I pass? No, you cannot pass. I'm just saying, right? But I'm just saying as well that think about all of that. People cannot just be allowed to come and go in your home as they please. And I'm saying it. For some persons who are married, you you take counsel from your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or your mother, your father more than you take from your spouse. And God says. That is not his word. The Bible says a husband will leave his father and mother. And we spoke about leaving physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually. All right? Leaving and cleaving, becoming one and clinging to tightly where, where nothing can separate. The two becomes one with your spouse. It means that you do a number of things with your spouse now. All right? It means that you and your spouse are now a team all right members of a team have things in common members members of a team share they make decisions they set goals they work towards the goal that's what teamwork is all about you and your spouse are now a team and you work together you discuss things together all right now the thing about cleaving cleaving sometimes can can it well well it can bring a couple together or cleaving can tear a marriage apart because when you cleave you realize that there are things that you don't like about your spouse and you decide to me I can't take this and I go on. Cleaving will bring out the good and cleaving will bring out the not so good. And so when you are cleaving as you come together in marriage it's important to understand that. Your spouse and you are different. You all came from different homes. You all have different cultures, different way of doing things. And do not allow the differences between the two of you to tear you apart. Sometimes you have to agree 
all right, on things that you may not want to be agree on. You know, one of the things my father used to say to us when we were growing up is that sometimes you have to give up your birthright for peace. I know some of you don't want to hear that at all because you want to get them good. Eh? But sometimes you have to give up your birthright for peace. The Bible speak about forgiving, forgiving your spouse. All right. The Bible speak about not going to sleep, um, not going to bed angry. The Bible speaks about all of that. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. What am I saying? I'm saying that in cleaving in any relationship, all right, it could be a job, you just get a new job and you have to work with someone, they will see the good in you and the bad in you and vice versa. In the same way, because your spouse living in the same house with you, you're going to see plenty good, but you're going to see some bad as well. Right? And we have to be able to overlook that. I want to encourage as well that um, be intentional about forgiving. Be intentional about loving in spite of what you know may be happening in your in your marriage. Loving, be intentional about about, and I have written down here about courting. Never stop courting each other. All right. So that cleaving and that to becoming one also speaks about sexual intimacy. You know, we have to talk about that. Sometimes when persons here leaving, you should leave your father and mother and cleave unto your wife and the two shall become one flesh. All some people thinking about this one flesh, of course, one flesh in sex. But one flesh in sex is just a part of it. Remember, we spoke about leaving physically and we spoke about it emotionally in terms of your emotional connection must be with your spouse and not with your parents or friends and that kind of thing. So when you have successes and you have accomplishments, your spouse must be the first one that you tell, not your father. There are some couples that friends know before their wife. That shouldn't be. I also want to say as well that there are some couples who compete with their own parents. Mommy and daddy spent 50 years or 45 years or 20 years accomplishing what they have. Their home, well furnished, two vehicles, they could go on vacation. You now get married and it's one year and you want to do all of that. It's not realistic. Unless you have the means to do it, the financial resources, it takes a lot of time for you to be able to develop yourself. All right? Because mommy and daddy would have spent a lot of years in their marriage and would have been through a lot of things. All right, so be careful of the competition because some children compete with their parents. And may I say that some parents compete with their children as well. And that is not supposed to be. All right, I was talking about the sexual um, intimacy. And um, I want to also say that affection is very important. And sometimes we share affection with other people and not our spouse. All right. Also, it speaks to not holding back yourself from your spouse in terms of sexual intimacy. The Bible says that your body don't belong to you, it belongs to your spouse. And the Bible said, in my understanding, is that, you know, you would be told if you have to go into a period of fasting or so, and your spouse must agree with it, then you have to let your spouse know, you know what, I want to spend a, a, a three days or seven days in fasting, and so no sex you not time, and your spouse must agree with you. Don't just decide to do whatever you want. All right, and the cleaving says that I must tell my spouse, I must share with my spouse. You cannot just decide that you're just going out whenever you want as a husband and you, you believe that your, your spouse don't need to know where you are going. Your spouse is you and you are your spouse. Why? Two becomes one. All right, God expects unity and oneness in marriage. And God expects as well, the two becoming one, I'm speaking here now to sexual intimacy, not in terms of, how do I say this? Sexual, sex in a marriage shouldn't be, is God don't like when a couple have sex and they're angry and the wife just said, hey, take it. Or the husband, he cannot, he's still vex and he, he just, he's just doing it, but he ain't really, it's as though, as some wives will say, as though she's just an object he's lying on, if you know what I mean. God, God wants sex to be enjoy, meaningful and enjoyable. Get rid of the clutter so that when you come together as one, all right, you're happy there. That's what I want to say. You're happy to have sex with your spouse. You must be having sex with your spouse and you're angry whenever you have to have sex with your spouse, you're angry. That's what God wants. Leave your mother and father and cleave unto your wife and the two shall become one flesh. 
And that one plus, the core of that one plus experience should be love, the agape love. The core of the one plus experience should be the joy of the Lord, should be kindness, should be grace and mercy. The core of it must be love, the love of God. All right, I'm going to ask Pastor Max to jump in and uh, we're going to begin to find you. You know, Doc, uh, you mentioned, you know, sex. And let me tell you something. Now, I know there's a lot of women don't feel for sex. Now, now men, it's, now, it, it goes by the books up, really and truly, because there are some women who want sex, and there are some men, they, I don't know, they're just not up to it, they're just not feeling themselves, but, you know, that leaving and cleaving, and your body's not your own, really. But that didn't say I have a right as a man, every time... I will just jump on you because I say you and want to rape you. And no, 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 no. That is, that is not love at all, at all, at all, at all. When you hurt your wife, really, you're hurting yourself, really. You understand? If you're a real man of God, anytime my wife hurt, it's supposed to, to bother me, really. But sex is very, very, very important in a marriage. Leaving and cleaving. Your husband must mix you, he must want you, he must feel for you. You know, Doc, you mentioned something too at the same time. Now, I always tell my father, because my mother passed already, and I will tell him, I said, Daddy, if you're coming by me, you'll give me a call before and let me know. You understand what I'm saying? I don't just want you. You don't know what planning I have with my wife in the evening, what we're doing. Yes, you're my father, but don't just come. Yeah, who's that? Daddy. No, I, I can't handle that. I, I will rather that you... I said boundaries, you know. You understand? I will rather you call me and say, Mark boy, I will be in the area today <clears throat> and I want to pass and give you a check, right? Folks, leaving and cleaving is very important. There are some persons, every time you get vexed, you run by your mother. That is not God. And matter of fact, there are some parents will always tell you, but you know your room always there. <clears throat> So, so in your mind, you have an option. There's no option. This is your wife, or you stick it out. You can be going home as a man. Every time you get vexed, you go and you sleep by your mother or a woman. Every time you get vexed, you pick up your thing and you're gone. You ain't ready for marriage yet. You understand? And you know, we like to say, when we get married, um, for better or for worse, you ain't ready yet. You're lying at the altar. You understand? Because here it is, the man in last year, all you have a fiery curl. I don't have to take this one. I don't have to take this. Right. And you're gone because you know you have a room by your mother. And then your mother encouraging it or your father encouraging it. You understand? So when we talk about leaving and cleaving, there's no options of running and going. If the man is abusive, I will tell you, find your way, get out of there as soon as possible. You don't want to live in a place, a man coughing in your head and beating you and, and, and doing you all kind of wickedness. But you will have fallen out. The best, even the men of God, they had, they had the little falling out. You will have little falling out. But folks, we are one. And you don't go vexing for long. It's very, very important for a man or a woman. When things happen, make sure you might just take a little walk away. No big thing, but don't play packing no bag and going and, and then you make that a habit. You're gone, you come back. You're gone, you come back. What kind of that, that's very childish, right? And the parents who who are loving that, they need to stop it. When you leave here, you don't have no room here again. You understand? Unless something real, 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 real bad happened. Because as long as that young lady knows she could go by her mother. And she gone, and that can that mash up a lot of marriage because sometimes the man say, you know what? I tired. Don't, don't come back, you know. Don't come back. And and that is it. Leave and cleave. And and a lot of lies in marriage. Lies, lies. Men lying, women lying, and 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 that mashing up relationship. You know you're supposed to pay the light bill. You, you, next thing they come and they cut the light. You know we supposed to pay the the, the phone yeah, or, or or the the house bill. You, you're going and you're gambling and and lying and telling me you're paying it and all kind of things. The two but become one flesh. I'm supposed to know everything you know, 
I remember one time I one time I think one time uh, me and my wife go in the early and one time I must I think that Pacific day my father passed on the road and I say yeah you know things you know we are, we just have a little falling off and so folks let me tell you something sometimes the the advice that your parents give you is not the best advice you understand yes, it's not a good advice yes. and you know the first thing he said well you know it's been too late what I just tell you we followed and that the first thing come out of your mouth. You know, it's too late. And you have to be careful. You know, you, as, you, 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 have to, you have to always have some money stuck away and this and that. So, so the, sometimes the, 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 the parents giving you advice, but let me tell you something, it's not God. If my yes, wife sir. and two and we become one, I have nothing to hide. I have no money to hide. I, then if I can't trust you, you ain't ready to be a husband or you ain't ready to be a wife yet. You understand? I remember you, your old man tell, he said, boy, make sure I put some money away and, and don't, don't let them know all your business. You know, you know that the advice you're giving me. No, you, take, you, you want me to be dishonest in my marriage. Yeah, that's right. You have to be yeah. careful who you take advice from two at the same time. Amen, doctor? Yes. Persons, um, Pastor Mark, you know, persons can only give what they know. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes when parents um divorced or separated and they don't have a good marriage what how they dealt with their spouses in their marriage is the same advice they would give to you to do what yeah. they would have done all right so you know the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly psalm chapter one verse one all right and so i believe that we have to be very careful as to who is giving us the counsel and even if the counsel comes from your mommy or dad or counselor or pastor or a good friend ensure that the council is in support is, is supported by the word of God. Very important. All right. How can someone someone who doesn't have a good marriage, all right, encourage you in the way that they should encourage you? They go, they will struggle. That person has to be someone who is really repentant in terms of the mistakes that they would have made in their marriage, you know, and um, before God and in that place of submission before God to and, and also forgive their spouse to to give you proper godly counsel. Yeah. All right. And so so what are we saying? Um we saying there's something that I wrote down here that I'm looking for. The question is ask yourself, does my action, my word, my decision or my attitude draw my spouse closer or further apart? You know when I counsel couples, married couples, one of the things that I would usually do with them after they talk about the issues in the marriage is I would ask them, what did you do in this marriage to cause it to be where it is now? And I don't want you to tell me anything about your spouse. I want you to tell me about what you did. Sometimes I ask them to write it down. Sometimes I just ask them to share, both husband and wife. All right. I think it's important to take responsibility for the things that we have done in the relationship or in the marriage. And for you single people going to get married, I want you to keep that in mind. All right, in terms of communicating and having conversations with your fiance. Or if you have a disagreement, it's good. You know, even when I'm when I'm preparing couples for marriage, and sometimes I, I realize that they had a big falling out. And I will tell them I'm so happy. I said, I'm so happy that this happened. Why am I happy? Because why? It is teaching you problem solving and conflict management skills. How would you learn them if you didn't have any? I am so glad because they're able now to manage it. How do I deal with problem? And so when they come in, I would say, okay, how did you all deal with the issue? They would say, well, no, we dealt with it in this way. And then I would say, okay, let me let us look at some of the other ways that you could have treated with the same issue for the outcome to be different. So it's good. When teeth and tongue clash, that's a very good thing. Yeah, it teaches you to be able to manage conflict. It teaches you to forgive. If you and your spouse always have everything going on, you would not be placed in a position where you have to demonstrate unconditional love and forgiveness and all of that. It's only when you really have a disagreement with someone that you have to now forgive and you have to now love them still in spite of. You yep. So I think those things are good. I believe as well that when teeth and tongue clash, it really helps you to grow spiritually and to develop as a person. All right? So the question is, what... 
um, decisions have you made and your attitude, your behavior? Yes, I know that some of you are quick to tell us about your spouses and your spouses, but I'm asking you the question, what about you? What have you done in your marriage or in your relationship over the years to cause your marriage to be where it is according to the word of God? That's the point I want to make. All right. Have you forgiven your spouse? Is there, is, do, do, you, do, you, do you run to forgiveness? You know, there are different things that we use to deal with issues. And for some of us, forgiveness is not one of the solutions and the remedies. Let solution be a, let, let forgiveness be a remedy. Forgive your spouse. Are you loving unconditionally? Mm -hmm. So the spouse is doing that. How are you treating with your spouse? Is it that you, you're silent? Is it that you're just, you're just goughing up? whole day you're goughing up, you, 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 you could, could barely hold on the edge of the bed. What is your posture like before God? Because your marriage is before God first, before it is before you and your spouse. Why? Because in the book of Malachi, the Bible says, God says, I was witness when you were, when you got married to the, the, the wife of your youth, I was right there. The spirit of God is in the midst of the marriage. So you may be looking at your spouse, but God is looking at you. What is your posture like in terms of leaving and cleaving? Now you are married. All right. How are you responding to the things that will manifest in cleaving when, when, we, when, when we show up our nasty ways? All of us have nasty ways. Do we slam the door? Do you say, you know what, I'm cooking no food? You do you say, well, find your, your, your way to work. I ain't carrying you down to work. You start your, your bounce your start and you're going about your business and you leave your wife home. Come on. We like to look at other people, but you know what the Bible says? Check yourself first. Check the beam in your eye. The big beam. But we like to look at the little, little, little more in the other person's eye, in your spouse's eye. But what about you? And I really believe that today is a day when God wants all of us to do introspection, both single and married couples. But because the topic that he gave me is leave and clean, especially as we're going into marriage. And not into marriage, into, into Christmas. A lot of couples have struggles during December month going over into the new year. Because Christmas time is a time of, I'm just saying, a time of love. And a lot of people are in homes and they are not happy. They are just not happy. They are in the home, but they're feeling alone. And a lot of money have to be spent. And, and a lot of tribal in marriages during December month. And God is saying, this is still your spouse. The leaving and cleaving policy or, or, or command is still in effect. It has not changed. It has not changed. So the thing that you are doing in your marriage or in your engaged relationship, the attitude and the behaviors and the words that you speak hmm, and the way you treat with your in-laws, but that's also important. So because you and your spouse have a little disagreement, all of a sudden you guffing up with your mother and, and your father and you're disrespectful. No, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. God says, honor them. Your mother-in-law and your father-in-law, they are the grandparents of your children. Know what you're doing. Know what you're doing. All right? So God is saying, that thing that we have done or we are doing in our marriage, ask ourselves, will it stay along the marriage or will it build up the marriage? That's the question. The thing that you're doing. Bible says, a man shall leave. You understand leave? Depart, abandon, move away from. Just as her root left her people in Moab and she went with Naomi to Naomi's people. She left. Leave meaning that she left. She moved from one location to another. I always like to say that Adam and Eve were living somewhere. They were living in a garden. They had responsibilities, especially Adam. And God didn't put anybody else in the garden but the animals. I think God is making a statement. As a matter of fact, Adam and Eve didn't have no fathers. Adam didn't have a father and a mother. And Eve didn't have a father and a mother. God was their father. All right? But think about it. God was their father. And, and, still, and, and God decided to put in his world. Although he know that he is our father. For those of you who know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's our father. But you know what? In his wisdom. God put in his word, he command, that command in his word. You say, you know what, husbands, leave. Man, man, leave your mother and father. 
and cleave, cling, hold on tight onto your wife. Because when that happens, it's only then that the two will become one flesh. What is that saying to me? It is saying to me that the two cannot become one flesh if you are leaving. Yeah, you may say, but, but, but Dr. Lord, no, no. What do you mean by that? The two become one flesh. The Bible says, leave. If you want to become one flesh, one of the things that you have to do is to leave your, father, your mother and father's home. That's what the Bible says. If you want to become one flesh, cleave unto your wife. That's what the Bible says. Becoming one flesh is not automatic. There are two commands before it. Leave and cleave. The Bible speaks about a man and his wife. Book of Mark, a man and his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. The Bible says, Jesus says, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. That's what we're speaking about. Mm? Male and female. All right, Mark chapter 10, verse 5. And then, then it says, for this reason. That's how it comes in, you know. Jesus is talking about the law of first mention. That the heart of God, all right, is for man and woman, male and female, to come together as one. Mm? And so he mentions it again. And then in verse 8, verse 7, he says, for this reason, I made them male and female. Why? For this reason, he said, a man, so that now, man must understand now, so that a man, he didn't see a boy or a child. A man must leave now. Right? His father and mother. This is a female. And cleave. Leave and cleave, and the two shall become one flesh. You know what? We want to have endless sex, so we don't want to leave and cleave and do what God said. And because a lot of people get married for different reasons, and I know what I'm speaking about. I mean, this thing doing this thing long time. And for those of you who don't know, I've been married for 25 years. My husband is deceased, so I'm speaking from a place of experience as well, and also as a professional counselor. All right, we want to do everything, but we do. And Pastor Max said it when we started. We want the benefits, but we don't want to do what the word of God says. We want the quick fix. All right? And God is saying to us today. God is saying to us. God is saying, hear what? Remind the church. Because this message is for the church. The church of Jesus Christ. Not the building that you're going into. The church, the body of Christ. The Bible says our bodies are the temple of the spirit of God. God says, speak to my people, speak to the church. I was in Florida when the Lord gave me the topic. Lying on my bed one morning. And I heard, leave and cleave. I said, God, this Christmas time. <laughs> yes, this Christmas time. Leave and cleave. Go and talk about it. And let it be, remind my people that there's a way that I want this marriage thing to work. And I have given a command in my word. And God says, obey my command. A man shall leave. Those of you going to get married. And I want you to, when this video is uploaded, send it to all the people who are going to get married that you know. Because they need to understand this. A man and a woman should not get married if they do not understand the principle of leaving and cleaving. They should not get married. A man and a woman should not get married if the man does not understand when the Bible says, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. If you don't understand that, then how are you, how are you doing it? A woman should not get married if she doesn't understand. Submit unto her husband just as she submit unto the Lord. What does that mean? They're going to get married. Ask them what those verses mean. And hear what they will tell you. Ask them when the Bible says, leave and cleave what God means. We are yet for them to answer. The wedding is Montana. Wait for them to answer. And hear what they will tell you. A lot of people are getting married. And they're not even ready yet to look. And what is God saying? We need to get back to the word. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. God will not ask us to do anything if he knows that he did not place within us the ability to do it. God would have asked the man to do that. 
You know, Pastor Mark spoke a lot about irresponsible males who want to stay in the parents' home. Nothing is wrong with men staying in the parents' home, but you know, after a period of time, you want to be able to develop yourself and have your own place, you know what I mean? Pastor Mark spoke a lot about that and from his own experience as well. So that we know, come on, the man is the one who protects. The man is the one who teaches and manages his family. The man who is the one who provides mainly, the wife will provide as well. A lot of women are working you now and able to, 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 you know, to, to give that contribution. All right, and the two money becomes one. One money, one money. Two money becomes one money. You make a budget as a couple. You make a couple of a, a, a budget for your for your home. All right, that's how it's supposed to be done. Okay. Pastor Mark, closing remarks because I have to. Yes, I have but, to go out. You know, Doc, you have you have you have said it, and I think we have said it all today. And um, don't just be a hearer of the word of God, but be a doer of the word of God. Even though you might not have the money to leave at this time, but you must make plans to leave your parents' house. And um, it will only develop you and help you to become a man and a father. There are some ways that you think you will want to do with your own children as a man. There are some certain things that you want to groom them and grow them up a certain way. But if they're in a home, most of the time, is the mother, your mother is the head at the house because you're still in your mommy house and she run things and daddy is still the head. You's not the head of that home, really. And you know, you want to groom your children the way that sometimes you have to separate yourself from certain place. The environment is, is, a, is, a, is a toxic environment. Sometimes it's too much early in one house. You understand? My mother makes 17 children. I know what it is to just be in a house with so much of brothers and sisters. You put down something, somebody go out with it. You put something in the face, somebody drink your juice. Oh my God. Folks, you know, leaving and cleaving is um is it's it's God's will for a man. One man put up and he, he say, you know, um, nobody is perfect, or somebody said nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. But the spirit of God said, be perfect like I am perfect. You understand? And in that perfection, to, to gain that, it will start with forgiving. You understand? Forgive your partner. That is what God wants to, to do. And I want to say lastly, there is no relationship that, listen, I remember going by doctor for counseling in the earliest part of my marriage. And, and I, I, I say, I love my wife, but I'm not in love with her. But really and truly, I don't fall out of love with she, you know. I just say that because I don't want to hurt you more. But you know what? The Bible said there in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. And I'm telling you, things turn around. Things turn around with proper counseling. Get help for your marriage. You could get back that affection that you used to have for your wife. Right now, it's not there for your husband. But let me tell you something. It could come back. My God is a fixer, and he can fix anything yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, right. yes. Yes, sir, Pastor. Can we take one question? I mean, it's Christmas. Next week, Saturday, we don't have any segment. So I think we could, Pastor Mark. <laughs> yeah. So sorry we had to come with a serious word today. I was hoping that it would have been a lighter word. But let's take a question. Let's take a question. Who wants to ask, please, a question? I know a lot of folks have problems with in-laws and those things, but we would have dealt with that in one of our previous um, sessions. Anybody? You all all right? Everybody good? Everybody good? Hello? Sister Jessica, go right ahead. Hi, how are you? I'm um, good. I was thinking twice before asking this question. But what if the person, your husband or, or your wife um, has never experienced what it is to be a full adult as, you know, taking on responsibilities and things like that. And they have their parents to go back to as far as let me buy, let me borrow $20, let me borrow this, let me borrow that. So they don't need to 
put the work to try to budget and do those things because they know that when they don't have it, they just ask somebody and somebody will give them the money. How do you maneuver that if when you've discussed that situation multiple times with the parents on how that doesn't help the person and you have that discussion with your spouse and they continue to do it, but sneakily behind your back? Okay, thank you so much, I'm Sister Jessica. I love that question. Um, when a couple has a problem in their marriage, whether it's a financial problem, whether it is lack of control, a lot in terms of financial control and the dependency on parents, um, and I could go on and, and identify a number of things that I don't want to do that. Um, it means that the couple, I'm telling you how it's done now, so the couple, all right, are having, they don't like what the other is doing. So in a situation like what Sister Jessica says, let's say this is what the husband is doing and the wife observes it, she doesn't like it, she probably would have spoken to him, he's not hearing, she sees him go by the mom or the dad and he bows and he doesn't listen. If a, if a married couple has a problem and they are trying to communicate about this problem to be able to solve it and it is not happening, they need a third party intervention. And I will always say that, all right? The third party intervention like the professional counselor or in some cases a person who's confidential will listen to the both sides and be able to assess the problem. First of all, identify the problem, assess what is the root cause, the causal factors, go back into the children. And sometimes you may have to speak to the man alone because of what he is doing. Maybe, a, maybe an issue that the man, man is struggling with in his own life as a person, all right? And so that level of counseling will be able to trash out everything. And the, the, the husband and wife, once they are willing to be, to expose themselves and to talk about the issue, they will be able to now set their own boundaries, um, open up communication lines, make decisions, and, that, and be accountable to the past or the, or the counselor, as the case may be. All right, and that is my recommendation. In the absence of that, you have a wife who doesn't like what the husband is doing or vice versa, and they have this bickering going on, or, the, or, or in some cases, the wife is that she's not saying anything, but she's hurting because she don't like what he's doing. He doesn't listen, and the two of them remain in their home, and they are just not getting along well at all, and the man continues to do what he's doing. All right, because that is what happens in a lot of cases. One isn't listening to the other and the marriage has broken down. Communication is, is like, it's not happening the way it is supposed to happen and uh, nothing is going on. But again, I mean, I, when, when couples come in for counseling, we, we trash it out. We, deal, we go to the root, we talk about it. In the absence of that, Sister Jessica is just remaining home and just stressing yourself out um, and trying to change a man and you can't change him, you can't change it. You can't change, and sometimes we have husbands who try to change what You can't change anybody. When you realize that you're talking about the thing and the person is not taking you on, there's need for intervention. There's need for what intervention. If, okay, I, I, know, I know counseling helps a lot, but what if the person, like you can, what is the saying? You can um, lead the horse to water, but you can't make nice. them drink. That's so nice. even, mm -hmm. even if you look and read all the therapy books and you try mm -hmm. to listen to it and, mm -hmm. and you do as much as you can, you, you, like how you say, you can't change a person. If they don't want to do it, they don't, they don't do That's it. Right. Yes. And so in a case like that, Sister Jessica, you have a choice to make. We always have choices, you know. God has created us with free will. I am not telling anybody to leave their spouse. I do, in fact, professional counselors, we don't give advice. We have a way that we do our sessions, except when you're, when you're applying, when we're doing Christian counseling, we have the word of God to direct, all right? But I, what I've found is that a lot of times you, you, you see the problem, you got counseling, and it continues to happen. But sometimes what persons want is for the pastor to tell them, why don't leave the man? Why don't leave the woman? The pastor's not supposed to do that. Each person who is in the situation know how they are feeling. You have to make your own decision. God has given you free will. Not only that, you can now go before the Lord. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is very critical. And the Holy Spirit will direct you as to how to treat with the matter. His Holy Spirit, he knows everything. The Bible says, use the word of God to teach and to correct and to encourage. All right, we have the spirit of God and we also have the word of God. Amen? 
Yes, thank, thank you very much. You're welcome, my dear. So people, what are you all doing for Christmas? You all already shop and back all your gifts and well, you already bake a cake and have your pastel pastel man? I feel like coming down by you, you know. Well, I'm also you're breaking up. <laughs> I love your battery for this Christmas. <laughs> oh, my oh my god, god. But people, you know it's a wonderful time it's a wonderful been a, been a really nice season that's your pastor yes 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 <laughs> i'm not working i saw no kind of stuff look at this stuff out mm -hmm. yes yeah, so people all right okay well, well some folks may not celebrate it's, you know, this is a personal choice, but enjoy your holiday. Enjoy the time with your family, however you want to enjoy it. All right. Remember those of you, you who are married, remember the cleaving, remember opening up the lines of communication. All right. And you know what? How, how should I put it? Um, enjoy your life. Do things that make you happy. Do activities that make you happy. Do things that will make you laugh and bring joy to you. Do not depend on anybody else to make you happy. If you know what I'm saying? No, what about if they pull away their thing now? Then it means that you will just be there. No, you, the Bible says, happy is he whose hope is in the Lord. I think that's the scripture. All right? So I want to wish you all um, a Merry Christmas. And um, if I don't see you all before the new year, and um, Happy New Year. I'm hoping that I'll see you all before that. But happy holiday. And um, get some rest. Enjoy your time. Spend more time with God. Prepare yourself for the new year. 2023 is fast approaching. I am very excited about what God is doing in my life and in the ministry. As I said before, I just came back. Last night I came back from Florida. I went abroad for two weeks of vacation. And um, it was really amazing. I enjoyed every bit of it. And, um, and now I'm back to just be able to spend time with my family and friends. I want to wish you all the best, God's best in your life, in your marriage, in your family, my God, and in your church. Pastor Mark, can you close or pray for the folks before we close off, please? Praise God. Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, I pray for every man, every woman, oh God, on this platform, God. I pray, Father God, for your blessing, Father. I pray that God, those that, oh God, hear the word of God today, I pray that God, they will not just be hearers of the word, but Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that God, they will apply what they hear today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for change to take place in their home. Let place change take place in their marriage, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that mothers will help the son to become real men and fathers will, will help the children as well, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that God, they will be able to leave and cleave in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. Father, I pray that everyone will enjoy their Christmas, all those are celebrating Christmas. I pray that God, they will have food on their table. I pray that God, we will even see them in the coming year in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. May God bless you and cause his face to shine upon everybody on this platform and grant you peace in your home in Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. Amen and amen. So again, we want to thank you all so much for joining with Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries, our single and married segment. Um, well, we know Christmas Day is Sunday. So, um, and then we have, um, we have, oh my gosh, your time is just going so fast. Next week, Saturday, we don't have any segment. All right, we don't have any single and married segment next Saturday. So tell your friends, tell your loved ones, tell your people. Do not come on the platform, all right? Um, next week, Saturday, because we're going to be here. Remember as well that you can log on to Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries YouTube channel, and you will be able to view all our videos from since 2020 to now. And we will have dealt with a lot of topics. So during this holiday, you are with your vibes in home or in the night, you're just chilling, you can listen to our video, all right? And you know what? You and your spouse or your fiancé can listen to our video. All right, that will help to really build and to edify. 
All right. And um, so the name of our YouTube channel is Destiny Shalom Outreach Ministries YouTube channel. And it will, it will come up and you just click on it. All the videos will be right there before you. All right. So again, much blessings to all of you. And um, I will see you when the Lord says that I will see you. All right, Sister Jessica. <laughs> You still have a wonderful time, Sister Jessica. Remember, your relationship with God is what makes all the difference. All right? So, Pastor Mark, thank you so much. Man of God. So welcome, so welcome, welcome, Doc. God bless you. Yes. God bless you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, wow. folks. Enjoy your evening. I'll be logging off in two minutes. Bye, everyone. Bye, Dr. Landon. Bye, bye. bye. Hey, look. <laughs> I see you all just now. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Oh, wow. Dr. Landon. Wow. <laughs> love you guys. Love, 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 love and love. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you too. Okay, so I'll be logging off now. Sister Coca, blessings yes, to you. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> thank you. Great. Amen. Glory to God. Good job, Dr. London. Did enjoy Amen. it as always. Merry Christmas and all the best to the new year. Thank you, Sister Marlene. It's Very good to so see much. you. You look really rested. <laughs> I feel good. Yes, Amen. yes. You look good. Praise the Lord. Yes. God, glory to God. Amen. Did enjoy you and Brother Pastor Mark and the others. God bless. Have a good, blessed holiday. Yeah, thank you. And enjoy thank it. You. God I, bless. I'm logging off now, people. I have to okay. go out now. Okay, good. Bye-bye.